morning, everyone. Um, I'm excited to speak to you um, today about how to leverage blockchain for social impact. Um, I've been in the financial industry for 15 years, and I've been a social impact investor for 10 years. And when I joined Consensus, it was a natural uh, thing for me to sort of combine the impact and the technology. And we created the Blockchain for Social Impact Coalition, where we have around 15 NGOs, impact investors, and technologists who came together to uh, find solutions for the world's uh, most vulnerable populations. So in my presentation today, um, I, wanted, I want to look after why blockchain for social impact and what exactly does it mean. And I'll give you some examples of what's been going on in the market. So just a few statistics to start off. Um, today, 2.7 billion people live on less than $2.5 a day. Uh, over 65 million people are displaced in the world. And 40 million people are victims of sex trafficking, forced labor, or forced marriage. Due to climate change, sea levels is projected to rise one to four feet by 2100. And corruption is estimated to be 1.5 trillion each year. This is the world we live in. And if you care about this, you might want to think, given the, the level of wealth that we've generated as a community through the blockchain and the blockchain technology, if we can do something about this. Vitalik Buterin, on December 17th, on the 12th of December, sorry, um, highlighted that the total crypto coin market cap just hit 0.5 trillion and asked the questions, have we earned it? And asked other questions, how much censorship resistant commerce for the common people have we enabled? How many unbanked people have we banked? How many Venezuelans have actually been protected from hyperinflation by our systems? The answer to all these questions is definitely not zero, but it's not worth 0 0.5 trillion. And so the question that I pose to you is what can we do about it through our daily um, activities, whether we're building companies, whether we're investors, whether we're mentors to these companies, however way we're um, involved in the blockchain space. Blockchain at its core is impactful. So if you're already involved in the blockchain space, you're already uh, bringing radical change um, to the system. It's a radical innovation. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to need a new manufacturing or service process to be uh, able to use this innovation. It's a competence-destroying innovation. Any competence that existed before is going to be uh, rendered obsolete. It's also a disruptive architectural innovation. It's not a modular disruption that you can just add to existing uh, infrastructure. So decentralization, peer-to-peer -peer exchange of value, permissionless systems will allow for acceleration of settlement time, lowering um, the cost of transactions, cutting out rent-taking middlemen, and lowering barriers to capital and information. So in itself, what we're doing is very impactful. But if we want to uh, specifically target the people that I mentioned in the first slide, the underserved, the bottom of the pyramid, um, people who do not have access to financial systems, to identity, we may need to be a little bit more intentional in what we do, and we may need to target those specific populations. So in doing that, we have two choices. We have the choice to go the radical systems change route or to go the incremental route. And that choice we have um, whether we're doing social impact or whether we're working with large enterprises 
right now in the blockchain space. If we choose to go the incremental route, uh, we're building on existing infrastructure. We're changing them little by little. Uh, we're enhancing efficiency and transparency, but at the risk of using old frameworks and legacy system. But if we accumulate all those changes, there's a potential for exponential changes. Example of this in the social, in the social impact space would be enhancing transparency of donation, replacing paper-based registries, adding layers of payment transparency. If you go into the radical systems change, you're going to create new business models. You're going to leapfrog um, le legacy systems. But it might be more difficult for you to implement this at a wider scale. And also, you might run into the problem that all these legacy systems that you want to leapfrog, you might have to depend on them. I'm talking about governments or other stakeholders. Some examples are identity land title, energy. If you want to create a um, self-sovereign entity, you might need to work with some governments. So if you think that intentionally, intentionality matters and you want to direct um, your blockchain solutions um, towards certain uh, areas uh, and, and problems that you want to solve, you're going to have to uh, really direct your efforts um, and understand the problems on the ground. Uh, at Consensus, we work with the UN, we work with uh, the World Bank, we work with other large charities. And if you don't have the expertise of people on the ground um, and use design thinking, um, human design uh, thinking uh, approach, you're going to get nowhere. If you're just creating a, a tech solution um, out of your um, office, um, you're not going to be able to do anything. Uh, working with people who are also the participants and the end beneficiaries of the solutions are super important. If you're driving a solution for refugees, try to have the refugees work with you. Have a refugee in your team. If you um, are uh, working with um, people who are displaced, um, have interviews conducted with them. Uh, partnerships are also key because um, there's no competition in trying to save people's lives. Uh, we're all uh, working together with NGOs and other um, entities, and we're trying to lower the cost of access uh, to the technology. And so it's a different way of, uh, of working together. And always focus on your impact and measuring your impact. It will allow you to, um, to see uh, how your goal is, uh, is achieved. So moving on, what are the sectors where blockchain for social impact um, are the most uh, active? Um, when we uh, created the Blockchain for Social Impact um, Coalition, we asked all our members, where do you think uh, there's the most impact and where uh, are you the most active right now? So they uh, identify four pillars. The first one is identity and vulnerable population. The second one is financial inclusion. The third one, supply chain. And the fourth one, energy and environment. Identity and vulnerable populations are really the cornerstone of everything. Uh, it allows access to bank accounts, education, property rights, cash transfer and aid. Um, and it's really self-sovereign identity. Um, if we achieve to find some solutions, um, is really the key to everything. So as an example, um, Right now, we were working on a project uh, with the Moldova uh, government on sex trafficking and um, uh, sex trafficking of children. And that will be based on an identity so that the children cannot cross borders uh, with fake ideas, but rather with, uh, if it's uh, with an ID that's encrypted in a blockchain, uh, there will be signals if they cross the border and alerts to the parents and other social workers 
so that they cannot uh, be sex uh, trafficked outside the country. Um, financial inclusion uh, is really important uh, in terms of remittances, uh, lowering the cost of remittances, um, creating new exchanges where you cut out the middleman um, is really key. Uh, the supply chain uh, is also uh, another big area uh, where we're able to identify and lower uh, the capacity uh, of uh, human rights abuses and human trafficking, but also um, labor uh, rights, uh, such as uh, wages and, um, and other uh, labor rights uh, causes. Energy and environment is one, maybe one of the most uh, active uh, areas that we, where we see off-grid energy and peer-to-peer -peer trading and also uh, carbon uh, offset uh, solutions. So those were the four uh, pillars that we started with. But during the year, uh, four other uh, areas came up, which I find fascinating. Um, the first one was human rights activists. And we've been in touch with a lot of human rights activists, which need a lot of um, security in terms of uh, their personal security. They need to, uh, to be sure that people don't know where they are. Uh, they need to be sure that people don't know what information they're, they're dealing with so that it's totally uh, secure. Their, their freedom of speech needs to be uh, secure and they also need to secure their funding. Uh, and the funding uh, needs to be outside of the normal sort of banking um, banking systems, and the blockchain provides uh, some, some solutions for that. In terms of democracy and centralized governance, um, there's a lot of solution coming up right now for voting, <coughs> fake news, movement building, liquid democracy, and I think it's just the beginning. Right now, we're in the stage where it's incremental change because we're trying to um, sort of say, okay, voting is, we don't, it's not great right now, so we're gonna try to find how to vote on the blockchain. But we haven't uh, come to the stage where we're challenging the representation and uh, the systems themselves. So we're still in the process of thinking about the democracies that we established 200 years ago and the rep representation system. Uh, but we, might, we should be thinking about a totally different representation system through the blockchain. And this through the, you know, the Western democracies and the Eastern systems and other systems in Africa, etc. So I think we'll see more in that space. Um, in the philanthropy space, there's a lot of action in the transparency of the donors. Um, and uh, it's possible now to see exactly how your money is tracked through the, uh, through the charity and the, imp the exact impact that it does. So that's a pretty interesting um, development and of course the development of donation in crypto. And the last topic is um, equal justice, um, evidence, minority rights, criminal justice, due process. All these current, um, all these current processes uh, will be enhanced by the blockchain, and uh, rights will be uh, hopefully better guaranteed for citizens uh, in this area. So um, I just gave you like a, a brief description of the potential for blockchain and social impact. Um, my time is up, um, so I won't have time for questions. But um, you see the, the huge potential um, for, um, for doing good or for changing our society with the blockchain. And if you have any questions, please come and see me. And uh, you can also go on our website, Blockchain for Social Impact Coalition, where there's a lot of examples of companies and, uh, and ways to get involved with NGOs. Thank you.